Well, it looks like we are ready for tile. Let's go over some of the things that uh, we talked about earlier. Uh, let's start with this niche. Now, in the previous segment, we had these two sidewalls exposed and we had the roofing paper um, with uh, one thing I didn't tell you in the last video is uh, at the corners uh, when I had the roofing paper I used a roofing uh, material uh, tube out of a cock gun and sealed those two corners and I had that uh, top flap coming down so all this was all previously um, set up with a good vapor barrier using the roofing paper so because this obviously is an interior wall and I had nothing to screw onto the basically this process I used to affix this piece of hardy backer on that roofing paper was just simply uh, concrete sealant say kind of a rubber based material it's latex it's also paintable but it adheres to most construction materials, including cement. And the way I did it was I screwed this board down first. I had these three pieces pre-cut. Um, uh, I set this in place over the top of this piece, leaving my little gap here. And uh, well, prior to that, I squirted my, my caulking all the way down and a legitimate amount, almost half a tube, and then just push this on to that sealant material, and then I screwed in both these side pieces, leaving a gap here, and then I just put spacers and wedge spacers to push this in to let it set up overnight, and um, the next morning it wasn't going anywhere, it wasn't moving, so that's how I do that. And then obviously now uh, I've got all this taped and reinforced with the thin set, um, fiberglass tape uh, combo embedded so that's how I do that pretty fairly uh, water resistant obviously I buttered the top here along with the top of the bench and then as you can see I did all my seams so between boards I was left with about uh, you know 3 16th of an inch on average gap I filled that gap. Now behind that was the roofing paper, so I had some kind of backing. Behind that um, tape is thin set, so I lay, I put a layer of thin set and fill that gap. And then as it's still wet, I put my tape over the top, embed it, you know, lay the trowel across it and glide it across to the seam and then lay another coat of thin set over the top of that. So you can see these seams if you look up close. They're pretty tight. They have a lot of material on them, but it's still nice and smooth. So I have a good transition. Now obviously, I, I, uh, while working with the thin set material, I went ahead and gone over my screw heads like much like a drywaller would do. But that gives me maximum water resistance and I even went as far as doing uh, on my shower floor that Hardy Becker got held off the shower floor about a half inch almost maybe three eighths and I filled that gap again same way I did the walls with thin set and then did my reinforcement tape uh, let's talk about that curb if you recall when I first got ready to pour this the shower floor and pack this in I laid that lath and then um, I bent that lath up the side of the curb so it was meeting right to the top of um, the curb I think I showed you that clearly in the previous video so this cap piece extended over that about five eighths of an inch leaving a void so I just took the same material the spec mix and just pack that in and trout it in nice and smooth. The diamond lath that was bent up there provided the perfect backing and support so it wouldn't go anywhere. And then once that dried, I reinforced this corner and then inside this corner here, like I did all the way around the shower with the thin set combo, you know, mesh tape sandwiched in between. And uh, that's how I got that done. So the top cap piece was screwed in and it got butted over 
on the front side, the way I got my pitch, I'm, I'm looking at about a 3 16th pitch. That's standard what I do. Basically what I did is I did a one by material, a piece of one by four pine, and then screwed it to the front of the curb. And I left it high on the front end side, the high side, by 3 16 And then that gave me my uh, trowel height. I just, you know, buttered my curve over the top and then just floated uh, that nice and clean. And then just, you know, took my trowel head and uh, kind of carved a little space in between the board. Let that uh, material dry overnight. I pull, pulled the board off. And um, this section here uh, got embedded with tape. So there's tape all along here, the fiberglass tape. So when I pulled my board out, I did the same thing between my uh, floor and then the vertical piece of that uh, hardy backer. So I think I ended up like five and a half, five and three quarter at the most on that curve standard height. Uh, gets a little thicker obviously with the um, hot mop system, but now looking at all this, uh, I think you can tell that uh, we're looking fairly water resistant. Uh, one last thing, or two more things. The gap up here, you see that gray streak here? That's the material uh, I used, the concrete adhesive for the niche. Um, I was just filling some holes. I mean, you can go crazy with that stuff. It's not worth it. I've already done that with the thin set. But I caulked in uh, that seam where the wall board meets the ceiling. And then... Um, primered over that because it's paintable caulking and then finished it. So my painting is all done. My ceilings, my walls are all done. I've got a really nice transition between my walls and my hardy backer. Um, I do the same thing on my walls. As the hardy backer meets the drywall, I'm, I, I do the same spacing, sometimes a little bit more, and I use thin set in that gap. And uh, once I fill it, I put the tape and then float another layer of thin set over the top of it. And then I float over that with a couple of uh, passes with 20 minute mud, drywall mud, let that dry, let it cure, dry and sand it. And then I put primer sealer, uh, like a mildew, mildew and mold resistant primer sealer. And I'm left with a really nice transition as you can see on both sides here. The reason why I didn't paint the uh, lower area is because I'm going to do a wainscot coming across that whole wall from the shower to the left all the way above this vanity. Uh, notice the vanity is floating, you know, just sticking out from the wall. Kind of gives a nice uh, little extra um, square footage. At least you can see most of the floor and it gives the appearance of a larger size bathroom uh, instead of it going all the way down and covering the floor. Plus it's kind of a modern look, the, this, this particular unit is from Ikea. So I'm gonna end up with a little bit of a backsplash coming across. I couldn't, uh, unfortunately, the, my wall's out of square. and That's as far over to the right I can get that vanity. But um, it's gonna look nice. I'm gonna have a nice mirror, man, uh, medicine cabinet, and then my fixture above it. But uh, as you can see, look at, at the floor. See that mark with the Sharpie? That's kind of where I wanted to end up, and that's exactly where I did. In fact, I, I fell a little shy of that, which is good. So that left me a space of about 30, 30, 31 inches, roughly, between the vanity and where the finished glass is going to go, mounted on top of that curb. And then inside the shower, I'm going to end up about 32. So that trim piece that I'm going to come across that's going to land on top of that wainscot is going to go straight up the side of that window and border on uh, that end of the shower. And it's gonna do the same thing over here on this wall. So this is how I do my prep. Uh, I like to get everything painted out before I tile. It just makes more sense. And, um, you know, that way I have very little touch up to do. I, I do a lot of painting, um, do a lot of electrical, do a lot of plumbing. And when you're a tile guy, uh, you're a general contractor. If you don't know all trades, then you shouldn't be a tile guy, in my opinion. Um, but anyway, I digress. This, the rest of, of this job is going to be easy for me now. Now I just got to lay tile. Um, let me stop for a second and talk about Hardy Backer and why I choose to use it. I've been tiling for 25 years. I started out using roofing paper with chicken wire over the top of it. 
and then we did a scratch and a brown, basically as stucco terms. Uh, two coats, basically, of, of spec mix, more or less, and uh, sand Portland cement. And um, you're, you're left with a big bump out on the walls. You can't go flush like this. So I graduated to waterboard after that and uh, Durarock, I mean, and then uh, pretty much use the same system I, I use here. I always use roofing paper underneath as my moisture barrier or vapor barrier, whatever you want to call it. Never use plastic. And then uh, ran my wonder board over the top and then did the seams just like this. Um, I didn't, I never red guarded my hardy, my red, my Durarock or uh, wonder board uh, because I had that vapor barrier, barrier behind it. Um, you can do that to Durarock. You can't red guard this stuff. I, I don't recommend ever red guarding hardy backer. It's an extremely, uh, it's not porous at all. Actually, what it is, is uh, it's got silica in it from my understanding. And uh, if that's the only drawback about hardy backer, it's, it, it evaporates water on contact. So if I were to splash some water on the mortar there, you'd see it, you'd see a dark uh, absorption of water. If I did that on a hardy backer, you would have hardly any color change. Uh, and it would just start working on evaporating all, all the water molecules almost immediately on contact. So if that's the only drawback, you, you have to work slow you could like if you're using a large format tile, 12 by 24 inch tile on a wall surface on a hardy backer, you can only work maybe two rows at a time. Uh, meaning that you scratch your thin set on and then you get two rows and you got to stop, put your tiles up and then, and then, you know, reapply your, your thin set as you go. It's just something you have to be patient with. A lot of guys don't like it because of that, but uh, thin set sticks wonderfully to hardy backer. Uh, you just have to wipe it down and keep it wet. But the only way you can keep it wet is keep wiping water on it. You don't want to saturate it. Uh, it's just a kind of a fine balance that you have to have when you're putting tile, especially large format tiles on a wall of hardy backer. But this is the way I do it. I, I'm convinced that this, this is the best method. A lot of times I'll put thin center on the drain. Uh, I ran this uh, shower bed pretty smooth. So I'll get good adhesion around that drain. I don't think I'm going to do thin set around the drain at all. That drain isn't moving and it's really smooth. Uh, I trout it really looking nice and smooth. So uh, I'll get good adhesion. Um, and that's about it. You know, like I said, Hardy Becker is uh, it's not commercial for Hardy Becker. It's just a product I prefer to use because I live in Southern California. Uh, I know that I screwed that stuff in like I would uh, plywood and it's just as strong as plywood. Uh, I, I shear walled that shower basically. Uh, I would never use drywall in a shower in California um, only because there's you know there's earthquakes and you get screw pop and you get you know if you've ever been on an inspection where um, you know a drywall inspection where the inspector comes in and looks at all your screw heads and make sure that you didn't break the paper and any of the screw heads and the drywall and they start circling 10, 20, 30 screw heads, telling you, well, you know, you should have screwed those in better or use one of those, you know, guards that prevents the, the screw head from breaking the paper, the drywall. So you might as well just redo this drywall sheet here. And uh, looking at the rest of it, it doesn't look too good. I mean, it could turn into a nightmare. Um, you know, <laughs> it's happened to me. Uh, I got good at putting in drywall, but Anyway, I'm kind of going off on a tangent. I don't use drywall in Southern California. I've seen YouTube videos where they prep drywall with um, uh, that waterproofer, uh, the Red Guard, and it looks good. The process looks good to me. It, it looks thorough, but uh, you're asking uh, that drywall to perform uh, a lot of things because even if you don't pop any of the screw heads into the paper, and you red guard the shit out of it, and you do a lot of waterproofing and, and prepping and taping and all that stuff, you're hanging hundreds of pounds of concrete or uh, tile on a wall like this, and you're expecting no, you know, earth, you know, movement or any kind of movement that occurs not to crack any of those tiles or, or your drywall may fail. You know, there's just so many things that can happen. Um, Typical that you have cracking at the very bottom where the floor meets the wall. Um, I've done jobs that are, 
you know, almost 15, 20 years old now. And I've revisited a couple of them that are at least 12, 13 years old. And they still look as good. And there's no cracking at the base. The bottom of the floor meets the wall. That's because I do this method. Uh, holds all the subs together. Um, it's just a very strong, durable substrate. And uh, I wouldn't do it uh, on, on the West Coast where we have earthquakes. And especially here in the West San Fernando Valley with, you know, extreme heat in the summer and, and freezing temperatures in the winter. So you get constant that heat and cold variance, uh, it, it moves wood. It, it expands and contracts building materials and you're, you know, susceptible to the building materials that you put in. And if you use drywall for, uh, for a tile substrate, you're, you're just asking for trouble. Anyway, that's, that's, that's all the lecture I'm gonna do on that. So that's it, we're gonna move on to laying out the tile. We'll start with the floor, uh, both in the shower and the floor. And I laid this out. If you notice, I put a Sharpie line on uh, all the way around my vanity so that I know where to run the tile to. So I'll create a little gap and then I'll seal that gap with a caulking bead across the top of that sink. Uh, unfortunately, I got to leave a little bit of a gap here because my wall's out of square, but that'll look okay. And then I'll put a little piece of tile going down so it gives the appearance of the tile going all the way down on the right hand side. And then obviously this will go all the way to the floor. It'll look good. Um, this is a nice little unit from Ikea. And they're, they're fun to plumb, but uh, they look good because they're hanging off the wall there. And if you mount them correctly, uh, they look good in a little bathroom like this. They don't take up a lot of floor space, obviously. So we're going to get this started. I'll uh, start setting up the tile and uh, we'll go from there.